Tracy came in 2006. She called us because she wanted to adopt um, a girl. I was feeling that it was time to expand my family. I didn't want to biologically have any more. My children at the time was 21 and 13. When a family calls, uh, we do an initial consultation, uh, usually over the phone, sometimes in person, uh, where we talk about what the adoption process is like and why they are choosing this. They told me that I would have to take a course. It was going to be held, I believe, for seven or eight weeks, three hours um, per session, once a week. Cambridge Family provides MAP training. MAP stands for Massachusetts Approach to Partnerships and Parenting, and it is a required course that any parent who wants to adopt or foster with the Department of Children and Families needs to take. You go over parenting issues. They go over issues that some of the children in the system may have. Children who come into the care of the department come into care because they were abused or neglected in their families of origin. And so they all come in with some degree of trauma. Many of those kids have been through a number of foster homes. Tracy finished the map and very quickly after the training she called and asked to have her home study conducted. A home study is uh, the family meets with the social worker on four occasions and it's a comprehensive assessment of the person or the people who want to adopt. They went back all the way to grade school. How were you parented? What type of home did you grow up in? What are your beliefs? How would you discipline children? They wanted to basically know what type of home they were going to put the children in. Everything we do is in the best interest of the children. So one of the things we say to our families is that our job is to find a family for a child, not to find a child for a family. We see a lot of very, very good single mothers, and there was no question in my mind that she was one of them. Two months after um, Tracy's home study was approved, we received a call from the Department of Social Services then um, with a set of siblings that they had that needed a home. We were told the family history, why they were removed. I was also informed that it was a legal risk, meaning the children were not legally free. Samaria is a, was a baby of about two or three weeks old, and her brother Manny was 18 months old at the time. At that point, I said, you know what, I'm still going to go forward. I'm going to take these two children and I'm going to welcome them and I'm going to give them a good life. Everything seemed to be okay and out of the blue, I received a call from Tracy herself sobbing on the phone and saying that she was just informed that Samaria passed away in the daycare that she was at. The final determination that we heard about was SIDS, which is um, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. Cambridge Family and Children's Services was just extraordinary. I was just distraught. I went and saw her um, several times after the death of Samaria. She was able to advocate for me to get some help. She was the to rally on my behalf for DCF, that I am a wonderful foster home, this is just a tragedy. Tracy just needed someone to listen to her and that's what I tried to do. Mark called me, he offered me a 24-hour phone number where I could reach someone in an emergency. He was very supportive. They offered meals for my family to help us get through the rough spots. A lot of little things that mean a lot. The department had asked her at that time if she wanted to keep caring for Manny because all she wanted was a little girl. Um, but she said, um, what do you mean? He's my son. Emmanuel was just full of life. Very happy-go-lucky child. I believe he was too young to fully understand what had happened. I'm not even sure how much he understood about her being his sister. I kept all the pictures of them together, and I just put them in a memory box for him. 
the department specifically asked us to continue working with Tracy, A, because she was in a difficult situation, and B, because it was clear that um, Manny's uh, legal situation was not resolved yet. I was contacted over the summer that an aunt who had showed up for Samaria's funeral had expressed interest in Emmanuel. This aunt had said no to many from the day he was born, but for whatever reason, at that time when the trial was coming up, she said that she wanted him. And the judge decided to grant her custody of Manny, and a day after the trial, Manny was shipped to another state to live with his aunt. It was very hard for the both of us to remove him. I felt like we were in a dream. And there was something in me, I knew I was supposed to tell that little boy bye. But for some reason, when I looked at him, I said, I'll see you soon. I just couldn't get out my mouth goodbye. We received a call from the department that there is a little baby girl that needed a home. And um, I immediately informed Tracy, and she said, absolutely, bring her here. I don't care what her issues are. She will be my child. And Tamia, today called Mia, was placed with Tracy. It was just love at first sight. <laughs> it, was, it, it was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. A few months later, the department asked us again if we could um, have Tracy take um, Mia's older brother, Xavier. I already knew Mia was not going to be the only child that I had. So I called them back and I said, yes, I will give it a try. Tracy decided to take him. She said, um, you know, he is her sibling and I want to be able to tell my child that I did everything possible for her to have her sibling with her. With Xavier, it was a different story. He is a child that experienced some losses and, um, and trauma and um, exhibits it in his behavior. Um, he also has some significant delays um, academically, speech-wise, language-wise. I called a meeting with Yael, and I started mentioning some of his issues that I was seeing, some of my concerns. She was calling me every day. Um, it went back and forth between me and her, and then me to the department, and me to the school. My involvement was quite extensive at, at that time, um, but eventually she got all the services for Xavier, and he's doing very well now. I got a call from the department that Manny's situation out of state has changed and that he was taken into custody again and he's coming to Massachusetts. The question for me was, do you think that Tracy would take him? And I said, of course. I will always take Emmanuel back. That's my son. This is his home. I'm his mother. This is his family. And that is exactly what she did. The next day, she got in her car and went to pick up Manny from the airport. I walked over to him and I started smiling and I said, hi, how are you? You got a little taller and he shook his head. And I said, do you know who I am? And he shook his head again. And I said, you know my name? He said, yes. I said, what's my name? He said, Tracy. As if he wanted to say, don't be silly. I know who you are, you know who you are. Why are you asking me your name? And I asked him for a hug and he wrapped his arms around me and he wouldn't get down. I actually carried him out of Terminal B into the parking area, at which point I placed him in his car seat that I had saved. <laughs> and away we went. Four months later, I received a phone call from Department of Children and Family Services and they had told me that Ethan, who is Mia's biological brother, was going to be removed from his foster home. And would I be interested in having him join my household? She says to me, Al, I have to look in my children's face and say to them that I did everything possible for them to stay with their siblings. He's coming home. And um, a couple of months later, Ethan, joined the family, so now Tracy has four children under four. 
For me, this is an incredible story of one person that has come forward for so many children when, when all it we expected from her is to adopt one child or maybe two. Um, Tracy is just so courageous and so loving and such a good example of what it is that we're doing here. When I visited them last week, it was just an amazing um, sight to be seen with, with the baby just roaming around, the happy talking to herself. Xavier like um, can't have enough of our attention and trying to get me to read him a story or, or show me a picture that he drew, um, being very proud of his brothers. Ethan is doing very good. He's in preschool also, loves his school, he loves his home, and as he likes to tell me, he loves me too much. Tells me every day he loves me too much. <laughs> Emmanuel is in preschool. He's learning to write his letters. Very happy little boy. He has come around. He's very excited to be in my household. He loves it. I'm mom. In Tracy's case, I mean, she was someone who, you know, from the start was experienced, dedicated, knew the issues that she would be facing, uh, and was coming into this with an incredibly open mind and a dedication and a commitment to providing a permanent home for children in care. And, you know, you can't beat that. Cambridge Family Children's Services played a major role. They were there from the beginning, um, from the first child being placed in my house to the fifth child being placed in my household. It's just a very healthy um, family living their lives together. Every child needs a home. Every child should have a family.